What is up guys, Andrew here, back with another video for you. Sorry I've been gone for a little while, I haven't made a video. I was getting ready for Thanksgiving break and had a lot of work to finish up uh, for school, and now I'm getting ready for exams, so it's going to be a pretty busy time of year for me. Uh, but once I get through that, there's going to be some more videos on the works, so just stay tuned. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about the Apple Watch Series 1, which is something that's near and dear to my heart because I've used it for about two years now, uh, and I'm really loving it, and I just want to share it with you guys. So let's talk about it. So way back in 2014 was the introduction of the original Apple Watch. Uh, and that was pretty remarkable for Apple because even though there were some other smartwatches on the market at the time, uh, it was something that was really special because iPhone users could really sink their teeth into it and take full advantage of. And then in 2016 came the introduction of the Apple Watch Series 2, uh, which brought with it a new updated processor, a better speaker, brighter screen, some other cool features. And alongside that came the Apple Watch Series 1, which was basically the same as the original Apple Watch, just with an updated processor, uh, which means that it was able to get through tasks more quickly, you were able to open applications quicker, able to just move through the user interface more quickly and smoothly, which was really cool. So this is a pretty minor upgrade and it's, you know, not all that fancy by today's standards, but it's it's pretty respectable. Uh, if you look at all the Apple Watch generations side by side, the 1, 2, 3, and 4, uh, you're not going to notice that huge of a difference between each of them. The design has stayed roughly the same. Uh, but if you want to get technical, uh, the thinnest Apple Watch is actually the Series 1, uh, which is pretty cool. But I don't think you're going to run into any situations where you're going to notice the extra thickness if you get an Apple Watch, like a newer one. Um, so I, I would say that's not a huge factor, but it's just a cool spec. So as for the screen, you're going to be able to see it pretty clearly even in direct sunlight. I haven't really had any issues with it. So unfortunately with the Series 1, there's no waterproofing. Uh, even though it's technically water resistant, you're going to want to be careful where you take it with you. So if you're washing your hands or doing dishes, uh, or you get caught in some rain for a little bit, you're going to be fine. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend going swimming with it, going into the shower, or that kind of thing with it. Uh, so just be careful where you take it with you. So the watch that I have here is the sport version, which means that it has an aluminum casing. It's the cheapest of the bunch, uh, but it still holds up really well. It has a really durable design, uh, and I haven't noticed any scratches or anything on it, uh, and it's worked out really well. The sport version is the only one that you can get right now, at least according to Amazon, uh, and that goes for about $209. Uh, but the thing is, if you're going to spend that kind of money on a smartwatch, I would probably recommend bumping up to the Series 2 Apple Watch, uh, because that's only about $20 more expensive or so. Uh, so it's kind of hard to recommend based on the price uh, and the differences between the Series 1 and the Series 2. But still, um, not a bad watch. So as for battery life on the Series 1, uh, it's pretty respectable. You're able to get through a full day, uh, even if you're doing like some serious workouts or anything like that. Uh, but I would say expect to charge it every single night. That's what I do. I usually charge it with my phone. I have like a joint wireless charger thing, so that works out pretty well. And as for connectivity, you're going to be able to connect to the same Wi-Fi network as your phone if you're out of range, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you're still going to be able to get those text updates, you're going to be able to take a phone call, that kind of thing, uh, if you're not in direct range of your phone. And another thing is Bluetooth. You're going to be able to connect a wireless pair of headphones uh, or even a speaker to this Apple Watch. And personally, I have a pair of AirPods that I use with it, and it works out great. As for the software on the Series 1, you're still getting the latest updates, which is pretty cool uh, for as old as it is. I, I'm on watchOS 5.1.1 right now, and it's still running silky smooth. I would say that, you know, there's still some lag, there's still some stutter when you're opening things up. Uh, but for the most part, it runs pretty well. So what's the verdict here? You might be wondering, okay, is this Series 1 Apple Watch really going to be worth it in 2018, going into 2019, uh, with all these other options out there, especially for other Apple Watches that are newer and better? Uh, and the thing is, it really just depends on you and how you use it. For me, I don't know if I'll be upgrading anytime soon just because of my budget and other things. Um, and I like where I'm at with it. It works out really well. So I can recommend it if you're on a budget or maybe you have a parent or even a grandparent who wants something uh, just to be able to interact with their phone better, interact with people more conveniently. Um, the thing is, you can still do all the basic tasks and it has all the basic functionality of those newer Apple Watches, which is pretty cool that they've been able to keep on those same features for this entire time. Um, three things that are really important to me, being able to send and receive text messages, uh, being able to send and, or not send, but make and take phone calls, uh, and able to track workouts and track my daily activity. And it does those things really well. Uh, so for that reason, I can recommend it. And you're able to do some other cool things on it too, like check the news, uh, check some app updates on your phone. Uh, you're able to get some cool watch faces that you wouldn't be able to get from 
I don't know, say like an analog or a digital watch as opposed to a smartwatch. And you're also able to do a whole lot of other basic tasks and everything that you're able to do on those other series Apple Watches. Uh, like you're able to check the news, you're able to track your workouts, able to get updates from your apps on your phone, um, you're able to get some cool watch faces, uh, and, and so many other things, guys. It's so awesome. So that about wraps it up for today's video, guys. I really hope that you learned something, uh, and I appreciate you watching until the end. It means a lot. Uh, more videos coming at you soon. So until next time, I'm Andrew. Peace.